it is senior night for Anthony Glover and for Marcus Hatton, two of the stars for the St. John's Red Storm. Tonight they put it on the line for the final time at home against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. This is Big East basketball tonight from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. It's the Rector Scarlet Knights taking on the Red Storm of St. John's. Take a look at the standings in the East Division. St. John's has wrapped up a spot in the Big East Tournament, but the same can't be true right now for Rutgers. They have to get tonight's win and then follow it up with a win against Syracuse over the weekend and get some help from West Virginia to assure themselves a spot in the Big East Tournament for this season. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Sims along with Jim Spinarkle. Glad you could join us tonight. We've got a couple of teams coming in off a of wins off a of top 10 opponents over the weekend. Let's start with St. John's. They knocked off the Duke Blue Devils at the Garden in a thrilling win. Well, it was a great afternoon, Sunday afternoon, with St. John's coming back. They showed their resilience coming back and really fight with the inside play of Glover, the drives of Hatton, the both of them combined down the stretch to really lead St. John's. But it was also the outside shooting of this pair. Glover, also Hatton, both hitting large, huge threes. But it was the play at half court here where Hatton comes up with the steal, takes it all the way to the basket, and gets fouled on the last spot. Spot up shot here at the foul line. Bang, knocks back the only shot for a big-time win for St. John's on Sunday afternoon. For St. John's, they hope that's a real momentum type of play and type of win for them to get them going for postseason, maybe in the NIT. Meanwhile, for Rutgers, they knocked off a good Notre Dame ball club at Rutgers in a thrilling, thrilling win. Packed house down at the rack, but look what they have to do to get into the tournament. Well, clearly Rutgers has been an up-and-down team all season long, especially with their outside shooting, but they put themselves in this position. The same can be said about West Virginia. We'll see who wants it more between those two teams. Coming up tonight at St. John's in Rutgers, a couple of guys have provided a lot of thrills and a lot of memories for the Red Storm fans. Marcus Hatton and Anthony Glover put it on the floor one more time in the regular season. We'll tip it off right after these messages from Madison Square Garden. This shot for the cup and a piece of hurling history. What must be going through that young man's head? Young man's head, young man's head. John's getting ready to close out the regular season here at home for the Red Storm of St. John's. St. John's will finish out its season at Miami on Saturday, while Rutgers will be in Syracuse on Sunday. Dave Sims and Jim Spinarkle with you. Red Storm come in at 13 and 12, 5 and 9 in the Big East Conference. Two and five at home, while Rutgers 12 and four overall, four and ten in the conference, and 0 and six in Big East road games. And they would love to get that first road win tonight to keep hope alive to make the Big East tournament, which starts next week right here in Madison Square Garden on March 12th. Both teams, though, Jimmy, gotta feel real good about themselves. I know speaking with Gary Waters today. Hey, Gary Waters today. They had the joint rocking at the rack when they knocked off Notre Dame over the weekend. Well, yeah, a team that obviously has been up and down, Rutgers, and to get that win, to get some rhythm, hopefully, the way they're thinking for a game against St. John's. So clearly they want to get into this Big East tournament, and if you can win a few at the end of the season, maybe it propels you throughout a game or two next week. Jerome Coleman was outstanding. I mean, I broke out of a slump. He had 27 points, 9 of 16 shooting, 7 of 12 from three-point range. Beat number nine, Notre Dame, 95-82. We talked about the win by St. John's over number five, over number six to 72-71. Marcus Hatton with another big game. He had 29 points. And it's a shame that uh, he came as a JC player because you're St. John's fan, you'd like to see him another couple of years. Absolutely, and that was such a remarkable performance that the entire St. John's team threw against Duke on Sunday. I mean, it's one of those things where they showed me, I thought, 
You know, Duke was leading at periods of time in that basketball game, and on paper you would say Duke should have won that basketball game. St. John's showed me something where they hadn't shown the last couple of weeks. They've had some difficult losses, especially at Alumni Hall, but they've shown that they were a better team than maybe what their record indicates. It's interesting uh, reading some of the comments from Kyle Cuff. As he was watching the tape, he was saying, Maybe we should have been doing this all year. Right. They really have been attacking the offensive boards. As uh, and Gary Waters is telling us, you know, St. John's is so used to it. They're not a great shooting team, frankly. Right. I mean, in fact, they're last in shooting in the conference, both in overall games and in conference play. But they're so used to running down the misses that right. they've got three and four people attacking the offensive boards. And that's a key for Rutgers to try to keep them off the old boards tonight. Absolutely. And the other part of that, too, is I had a chance to speak with Mike Jarvis before the game. And I said, Mike, that was a great win you had against Duke on Sunday. And he said, yeah, I wonder which team will show up tonight for us because it's been that type of season. See, Kyle Cuff played real well the other day against Duke. And Anthony Glover stepping outside. You saw in the open hit a tremendous three. Making a one-point game in the final seconds of the win against Duke here at the Garden. Sold out Garden on Sunday. Here's the remaining action in the regular season in the Big East Conference. Seton Hawk coming up the loss last night. They got walloped at Pittsburgh. Providence coming up the nice win at Connecticut last night. Yeah, and how about Boston College? All of a sudden, you look at Boston College, and they're leading the East Division. A, team, Dubai, that's, yeah. Yeah, a team that started out 0-4 um, in, in the conference play this year and really came storming back. Troy Bell has been outstanding. As you look at Sunday's game, the defensive-minded Pittsburgh ball club at slumping Villanova. And then Rutgers coming out of tonight. Should they win tonight, they'd be looking at trying to beat Syracuse at Syracuse on senior day. So they're two straight games where yeah. they've got their plan against emotional seniors. Thanks, Mr. Schedule Maker. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Waters, last year's New York Metropolitan Area Coach of the Year by the Met Coaching uh, Met Basketball Writers. Went 18 and 13 last season. And Mike Jarvis, he picked up win number 100 at St. John's. He's the only active Division I coach with 100 wins or better at three Division I schools, Boston University, George Washington University, and now St. John's. Look for Lamazana in that Rutgers uh, starting lineup. Been very active on the boards himself, and St. John's starting a couple of seniors, Abe Keita and John Scheiman, uh, getting their first career start. Officials today, Tim Higgins, Curtis Shaw, and Les Jones. Tim Higgins will get us underway. Here we go, Big East basketball in St. John's. We're gonna watch Rutgers go on the attack first. Rutgers ended a four-game losing streak with that win over Notre Dame and Coleman trying to pick up where he left off. Misses a long launch there and rebounded by Kyle Cuff. St. John's starting with a 2-3 zone and Rutgers going long range. That's what Mike Jarvis wants out of that defense, especially if Rutgers has some struggles shooting the basketball from long range tonight. Rutgers 10th in three-point shooting. There's Hatton coming off the pick. And Marcus Hatton, where would they be without him? Now the question I start to think about if St. John's goes up right here, does Mike Jarvis stay with this lineup, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and Simon gets a tie-up. Tell you, if I was Simon that last time down the floor, though, when he touched that ball, it would have gone skyward. That's exactly. <laughs> I, I saw. Um, where was I? Was it last week when we had, we had Villanova in Miami and That's Lou right. Rusky, and they ran a play for Lou. When you touch it, babe, you better get rid of it. He got it up though too, sure right? <laughs> what are you, about Twelve seconds after that, <laughs> he was, he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they got in the game, they're blowing out Miami, and, and they couldn't, he wouldn't take a shot. Here's Glover. Scheiman. He's got it now. Hatton with a quick pop. Can't get it, and a rebound. Oh. Look out. Oh, my goodness. Exani fell down. Got knocked out, I believe, by his own guy, Lamazana. Lamazana was on the baseline. Yeah, it was Lamazana that just crashed him to the floor. Here's the end of shoot it, John. They always love these senior day games, usually. You know, well, Mike Jarvis said before the game, speaking of him in particular, Shyman, it's a, it's a great experience for him right now. Oh, so no he's got to enjoy it. it. Here's Coleman back the other way, and off the ball, Sherrod got knocked down by Abe Keita. So Abe's in the book. Very quickly. He's got a little, number next to his name. Little trip. 
We've we'll gone to the penalty box if we're in hockey on that one. The trip. Two minutes. Gabe's out of Toland, Connecticut, by way of the Ivory Coast, Winchendon Academy. And rebound taken out by Kyle Kopp. And this matchup here at the guard position, the point guard, Howard Coleman. It's a good and one. That, yeah. It's a real good one. St. John's has been really struggling from the field. Last six games shooting just 32-5. Kyle Cuff. Scheinman gets a shot off. Even the teammates are rooting for him. The fans go in. <laughs> and it went off a record. I'm smiling and giggling over here, Dave, because Scheinman was, there's a great look. He's, he was giggling a little he bit. He knows that was it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, you can't say enough about guys like Abe Keita and Scheinman who don't get a lot of time. They're there for practice every day, on time every day, work hard. And Scheinman's a 3.86 student, and he won their Scholar Athlete Award uh, prior to the game today. Yeah, and, and they work, you know, your, your point is well taken because they work as hard. They run the tough scout team and scout drills during practice. So they help ultimately to make a team is get better and better. Here's Elijah Ingram. And uh, nobody was aware that that was a shot clock situation. And St. John's. Well, let's see. Let's go back a second now. Are they talking about a possession? Curtis Shaw explaining to Gary Waters. <laughs> Gary doesn't want to buy it, but he's going to have to accept it. Scheinman uh, with one miss. And he's got a team rebound for St. John. So, John getting on the board. It's all right. Curtis Johnson. So, St. John's will maintain possession. Elijah Ingram and Grady Reynolds came in to replace Scheinman and Abe Keita. And there was a shot clock issue. I think yeah, I think they had to do. Yeah, I think they had to do with the possession. Okay. The change of possession, so they get a full shot clock. Glover going in and drawing a foul. I believe it was against Sean Exani. Exani, the junior out of Red Bank, New Jersey. Now down low, I mean, it's when Glover has the basketball down low. I mean, people start to go after him. They look at his size and they think they can block his shot, but he's so strong down there and so aggressive with the ball. And he usually ends up putting it in or getting to the line like he is right now. Glover's had a pretty good year, 11 points, six rebounds in conference play. There's the numbers. He's 17th in the conference in rebounding in conference games, tied with Marcus Hatton of all people, and 14th in offensive rebounds, about two and a half a game. You know, this is a St. John's team that can rebound. They've had a couple of times this year where they've got over 20-plus offensive rebounds. Their problem has always been putting the ball in the basket once they get it. St. John's has dominated this series, Jimmy, in the Big East uh, play 7-2. to two. In fact, seven straight wins against Rutgers in conference play. And a long-range jumper there by Ricky Shields. And you notice just then, too, Hatton could not get over to his right side, the shooting side. He was on the left side of the shooter. Very difficult to get a hand in the face or a deflection on that type of shot. Ingram going against Ricky Shields. Coleman and Hatton. Got to like that matchup. Brady Reynolds trying to work against Lamazon. Too hard. Rebound Glover. There they are attacking their offensive boards. And the arrow's going to give the ball to Rutgers. Grady Reynolds trying to get that ball in the blocks a little bit. Had a nice afternoon against Duke where he had five points plus ten rebounds. And a good call from the officials. Xani right there with his hands on the basketball. Sherrod with a burst, put it wow. up, open over the top. What do we got, a foul? Yep, that one hit the uh, shot clock. Hit the, hit the shot clock, and it was deflected by St. John's. <laughs> top of the backboard's in, shot clock is not. Right off the hands of Coleman. So a turnover, St. John's gets it right back. St. John's with seven straight wins against Rutgers. They're seven and five all time here at the Garden. Is Hatton created his own shot. And Coleman picks up the foul, his first. That's one of the things Coleman's going to have to be aware of, too, that Hatton will keep the pressure on with the basketball. And he's got to be careful about picking up the unnecessary fouls, even though here, let's see, he takes a jump at him. Yeah, may have slid up the, uh, hit the hand a little bit, and also on the forearm. They gave the foul to Lamazana. They did? Yeah. Five to three ball game, St. John's. Now they change it. They do. They, they got it correct now. It is Jerome Coleman. That's what I thought. It's Hatton. Not a bad free throw shooter. At 72%. 
something. I thought my eyes were really going on me just then. <laughs> Coleman and Lamazan. I could see if it was Coleman and Sherrod, maybe they're about the same size shields. Here's a key matchup. Elijah Ingram has Coleman, Exani. Oh, that was goaltended by Grady Reynolds. Pretty good stage just then by Exani, too. He never got that basketball until the very end where he snatched it and finally put it up off the glass. Yep, just about very close to a travel, but a good no call from the officials there and gets it up just enough to squeeze it towards the glass. See they're jump switching to there, Dave, to veer out. They're showing a hedge out high in the high screen to force the guard to go east to west rather than go right down the middle of the floor. They're going to make somebody else other than Hatton beat him. Go right down the middle of the floor. They're going to make somebody else other than Hatton beat him. Glover draws two and make Grady Reynolds shoot. Grady can't get it. Glover rebound. Had it knocked away by Sherrod. That'll be St. John's ball. Well, they want Reynolds to shoot that ball, Rutgers, because they obviously gave him that 15-foot elbow jump shot twice just then on that one set. Grady shooting just 35% for the season, 39 in conference play. Here's Hatton splitting a defense, dropped it down to Kyle Cup, and oh, that's a goal 10 on Ramazana. Even it up, the ball ends to the floor. We reach our first media timeout, 15.55 to go. Eight to five, St. John's in the lead here on senior night at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Now during the National the Senior Sentiment, Liz and Jackie, we're going to miss you seniors. Rutgers Scarlet Knights really got it done against Notre Dame. Look at that. Almost 54%. A season high from the field against the Fighting Irish in a 95-82 win. Coleman with 27 points. It was the highest point total in Gary Waters' year plus as the head coach of Rutgers. There's look at Gary, a longtime assistant, and finally got a head coaching job and done an outstanding job down in New Brunswick. And now his team has to contend with some full court action that St. John's put on Duke this past Sunday afternoon, had some success with it down the stretch in sure particular. Yes. Ooh, that was up for grabs for a second there. And Hatton gets called for the foul. First on Marcus. And a lot of that success by St. John's is one of former Rutgers players, Dante Jones, fouled out of the game. Took the offense away from Duke. Yeah, one of the other things, and Mike Jarvis even touched on it before the game, he didn't think Duke really tried to attack against his press. Let's see if Rutgers tries to attack it. See, that's what you got to do. Break people down and you get some numbers. And they get a finger roll from Sherrod. Well done. Yeah, right on cue. Yeah, and that makes you think as a coach. If you're Mike Jarvis, now you say, okay, I'll come back with that one more time and let's see if they break me down again. And then you got to change and make some adjustments. Good step out again by Exani to get Ingram going across the court. Perfect world for St. John's. You'd like to see Hatton put it on the floor and get Coleman in foul trouble to take, get him out of the game. Here he comes off the screen right now. See how smart Coleman is defensively, though, if he stays away from his jumpers. Eight on the shot clock. Had to force one up, and Grady Reynolds gets called for the foul against Sean Exani. Sometimes you get away with that when you push along the bottom or the lower part of the back. You don't get away with it when it's across the top of the shoulders on the no. push. <laughs> if we can see it that oh easily. Oh, goodness. And that's really not our job. Here's Shields breaking pressure. Coleman for three. Coleman marks up a three as first of the night. And now you have to start saying if you're Mike Jarvis once again. Two presses, two easy buckets down the end, one three and one drive to the hoop. Perimeter play of Rutgers pretty good against the press. First lead of the night for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Hatton's got it. Coleman gambled and missed. That'll leave Ingram. Unusual looking shot. He's had some success. Kyle Kopp partially blocked. That was blocked by Lamazana. In a numbers. hurry. Yep. Great look. Shields with the right hand. He's got a layup. Well, Rutgers is really spreading the court and not only spreading and spacing well on the breaks, but they're getting down the floor in a hurry right now. 7-0 run by Rutgers. It's your worst nightmare as a St. John's fan. You beat Duke. And now you got Rutgers, and Rutgers has had its problems, as you mentioned, 0 for 6 in conference road games. And that's the game you got to get. Yeah, two teams in kind of opposite directions in terms of the mentality right now. St. John's doesn't really need this win. Rutgers desperately does, you know, need the win. And obviously with St. John's after their big win against Duke, possibly a mental letdown, we'll see. Glover will get a blow. 
Still a long way to go, though. Sure enough, Willie Shaw, his first appearance tonight. Ingram to inbound. Pretty good defense by Rutgers. Good quickness in the backcourt. Shields Sherrod and Coleman. Hat in reverse. And he finishes. Oh, he's so crafty around the basket. The ability to not only break people down off the, off the dribble, but make something happen going towards the basket. Sherrod maintaining his composure. He drilled that little kid on top of the head. Ricky Shields forces one. that properly because that was a little bit of a forced shot just then it went up quicker than I think he even anticipated at first Herve makes it a four-point lead for Rutgers Coleman almost got a steal and Coleman knocks it out of his hands 14 on the shot clock. good stop just then by Lamanzano also not allowing Hatton to go around the corner there and turn the baseline even though he was up on the sidelines, that's where Hatton wanted to head. Make, make a little turn and head towards the baseline. Ingram with 12 on the shot clock. Gives to Hatton. Might have gotten away with a step. And he tied him up. Loose ball. Here's Rutgers again. Knights with the lead, leading by four. Sherrod shifting gears inside. Put him up. And he got fouled. How about the burst by Sherrod down the lane? The tempo has been very nice for Rutgers on their breaks. They've been waiting for the lanes to get filled. They've been waiting for teammates to get in good spots. And if it does not happen in terms of an outlet pass, they break it down. Watch off the dribble here. A little delay. Next thing you know, Sherrod's going towards the basket. He's looking over the court, looking over the situation, seeing what develops. Well done by Mike Sherrod, junior from Brooklyn, New York. So you know he's excited about playing here in Manhattan as Glover comes back in for Grady Reynolds, who picked up the second foul. Sherrod, not a great free throw shooter, 53%, but he makes it a 15-10 Rector's lead. Just continues to be in that straight man-to-man, a -man, little bit of a help, especially on the high screens. Gary Waters said they are going to pay some attention, pay attention to Marcus Hatton, but they weren't going to take two, three guys, you know, put two or three people on him. They didn't want the other folks to hurt him. Well, just that show. They continue to show on that screen out front. Here's Glover facing up against Xani. Tough shots at an air ball. Good deed by Sean. And here comes Ricky Shields. He's got numbers with him. Shields trying to get it down. Elijah Ingram takes it away. Ingram against the shot clock. Jump stop in the lane over Lamazana. Tip is good. That was a good decision just then by Ingram. He recognized the big guy, so he knew he wasn't going to be able to go to the basket, but he hesitated long enough to let a couple of his teammates get in the rebounding position just in case he missed. They give Hatton the bucket. He's got eight of the 12 points for St. John's. Rutgers leading by three. Coleman with a three to his credit. Well, there it is. You can always get that shot, Dave. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of time. Right, you can get that 23-footer anytime you want. Or little carry. And a carry as Hatton tried to get a change of pace dribble. But we'll take a timeout with Rutgers leading 15-12. And Herve Lamazana, watch this one. This is a one of the early highlights of this evening with the quick throwdown on the miss. Rutgers by three. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, everybody. Three-point lead for Rutgers at the 11:48 mark. And a reminder to get information on your favorite Big East team. Go online to www.bigeast.org for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big East. And next week, you can follow all the actions of the Big East tournament from right here at Madison Square Garden at bigeast.org. Dave Sims and Jim Spinarco with you here at the Garden. Mike Jarvis talking about his team before the game said we've been good enough this season to be in every game but just not quite disciplined enough to get it done at both ends of the floor. We're always one or two plays away from making things happen. But uh, he likes the way the team has been playing of late. Biggest basketball from the Garden. Rutgers and St. John's. 
just underway. Dave Sims and Jim Spinarco with you. Rutgers took the lead on a Coleman three, and they have a three-point advantage right now. Calvin Wooten has performed well of late for Rutgers. He's in the game right now. This is Joel Wigan, number 13. And initially, St. John's came out in this game with the zone, a 2-3 zone there. Now, with a takedown there, a takedown along the baseline in a man-to-man -man defense, St. John's. Second foul on Abe Keita. Team fifth foul. Just two team fouls against Rutgers. Here's Kareem Wright, the captain of this Rutgers ball club. Coleman guarded by Willie Shaw. Coleman shoots over the top and hits a three. 57% of his shots are three-pointers. Coleman is very good at making you think that he's going to drive and put the ball on the floor because he hangs on to the ball for an extra second, which as a defender, you start to think, okay, he's lining me up to go by me. Then when you think that way as a defender, that's when you give up that shot. King is in the game right now. Eric King out of Lincoln High School in Brooklyn. Willie Shaw, runner in the lane. And Willie Shaw, generally an outside shooter. Willie Shaw! Inside that below the foul line with a bucket, 18-14. His feet making that move and really finding a good spot in the lane just then, a quick catch and go. Calvin Wooten out of Detroit's McKenzie High School, same high school that produced Gary Waters. Here's Coleman, left free. Can't get it, rebound Glover. That's a man's rebound inside just then, using all the strength. Let's see if Hatton can get some things. Here comes Xani again. See what they're doing. They're just slowing Hatton down a little bit. Right at the top of the key area. There's your three-point numbers to this point. St. John's is last in three-point shooting. Easy rebound for Jarrell Wiggins. He's got Coleman ahead of him. Wiggins takes it down the lane. Put it up, and that was blocked. Eric King got that one. Good job, too, by Glover to make it the trip a little more difficult down low. Down low, kick it outside, Willie Shaw. Willie's had all kinds of trouble converting on those wide open jumpers. So behind the back move just then by Coleman to free himself from Hatton. Willie Shaw shooting just 35%. Exani down low. Set up Wigan. Wigan with a short jumper. And how about Rutgers with a 20 to 14 lead? And what Rutgers is doing, once again, at the half court sets offensively is they space the floor well, but two or three guys that trip used one or two dribbles very effectively to get themselves in better spots on the floor. Wow, a little careless there, Hatton to Shaw. Third turnover by the Red Storm. Ingram is back in. And there's Mike Sherrod returning along with Lamazana. Coleman gets a blow. Coleman, so far, with six points, he's got two threes to his credit. Biggest lead enjoyed by the Scarlet Knights tonight. 20 to 14, a six-point advantage. Sherrod with Wigan in the backcourt, along with Wooten, Ramazana, and right up front for Rutgers. You go to Kareem Wright, guarded by Abe Kino, already has two fouls. Abe with a block! was nicely done. Sure it was. Spaced himself first because of the foul situation, then went straight up. Wright really didn't seem to have that ball clean. I've seen him work the blocks a whole lot better than that, but it's usually when he's about two feet in further. Six foot nine, Abe Keita with a big block there. St. Johns has got the ball down six. Ingram out of Jersey City in trouble. King shot won't go. One arm rebound by Lamazana. St. John's a little out of sorts right now with their shot selection. But Rutgers continues to gobble up the boards, doing a good job with the defensive glass, keeping St. John's off the offense. How about this? St. John's 5 of 18 from the field. Lamazana wheels, flips it up with the finger roll. Herve! A good use of the body there, too, by the big fella. Here we go upstairs. Good block. And now Lamazana called for the foul. Thought he had a block. Ooh. Lamazana is one of the best shot blockers in the league. He's fourth in the conference, picked up his first foul. A second foul, big, that is the first foul. All right, we got that straight. Lamazana getting the body bump by Glover. You feel the body, and then you want to go away from the pressure that Glover threw on the lower back just then. Nice little spin cut move. Irve is out of a big dinner in the Ivory Coast. Tenth in the nation, tenth in the nation. Block shots. 
Willie Shaw at the line was almost 73%. Kyle Cuff and Grady Reynolds will return to the St. John's lineup for Abe Keita and Anthony Glover. Boy, it's a totally different atmosphere from Sunday when we were here. Duke coming in, all the Duke fans, the, the New York metropolitan area, seemed like everybody came to that game. Yeah, we were speaking before the game, you and I, Dave, I thought there'd be more of a Duke presence, and there wasn't. The brightness is down low. I thought it was about 75% or so loud for St. John's. That's just where the Red Storm wanted it, too. Brady Reynolds, not a reluctant to shoot. All right, 15-foot shot, you gotta take it. Ingram goes down, challenges Irving, loses to it. Lamazana comes down with a rebound. Lamazana doesn't get a blocked shot just then, but he's the reason that shot was missed, for sure. Ingram kind of getting the body up in the air. He was searching for some body to get, on to, get to the line. Gerard in the corner. Won't get it. And here's Ingram. He's got numbers in his favor. Gives to Willie Shaw. Goes up on the layup, and he's got it. Good job on the run out by Shaw on the left side. King on the right side of that break. A nice three-on-two fast break delivered by Ingram. Well done for St. John's. Nice lift provided by Willie Shaw. He's got six points off the bench for the Red Storm tonight. Well, he's had his share of troubles here at St. John's, but breaking out this evening. And Shaw putting that ball on the floor just once to be able to deliver. But a good break there. When you get out quickly, you get out the half court, you want to be as wide as you possibly can so two guys can't defend three. Nice run just then. We've seen Rutgers run a couple up the uh, fast break their side. St. John's coming right back there. St. John's Ball Club was picked fourth in the preseason uh, prognostications by the Big East coaches behind Connecticut, BC, and Villanova. And the reality at this stage of the season, they're five and nine coming into tonight's action, fifth in the conference behind BC, Connecticut, Nova, and Providence. Well, you take a look at this now. Ingram delays just a little bit. Look at Shaw, though. He's out in a perfect attack position. He first runs away from Ingram to Ingram's left to give himself some spacing to fill the lanes, and then attacks at about 18 feet and in. Well done by St. John's. Wooten having a hard time. Here's Kareem Wright with a face-up jumper. Won't go. Kyle Cup rebound. Wright's much more comfortable on the blocks from four feet and in. Cup's got six rebounds. He'll get a chance to finish the play. Can't do it. They keep it alive. The tip back. That's one thing St. John's does very, very well. They tip the ball, keep it alive on the offensive glass. Mike Jarvis second, and Vernon Clay calling out the play here. Ingram, see, Wigan had a little bit of handful of shirt there, near <laughs> the Jack Marin tradition. You caught that, huh? Jack Marin of Dukey back in. Early 60s, great Sorry. career with the Baltimore Bullets. Used to bat. Wow, nice rebound by Grady Reynolds. They want to see more of that. Well, that's what he did Sunday afternoon, snatching 10 of them against Duke, especially on the offensive glass. That's where you do your damage if you can put those balls, the putbacks back in. Grady Reynolds, 15th in the conference in offensive rebounding. 6 0 1 here by St. John's. Close within two. Amazana got cuffed in the air. Oh, he lost it going in. Couldn't finish it. Now he stepped on the baseline. And he turns it over. Timeout with 6.03 to play. And Brady Reynolds staying close to the basket. Comes up with a big bucket here for the Red Storm. As they close to within two points. Your six-point lead down to two here at the 6.03 mark. First half in Madison Square Garden. Home finale for the Red Storm. All right now, let's take a look at the ConAgra Foods Big East standing. St. John's at five and nine. Boston College has already clinched first round by in the Big East tournament with their win a couple of nights ago against Villanova. They play Connecticut. They've already beaten Connecticut. Right. They played them at uh, BC this weekend. And over in the West, for most of the year, that's been the strength of the conference, Jim. It really has been. I mean, Syracuse has had a terrific year. They, you know, a team that had a couple of young players start things out. The Jim Beheim squad really picked it up. Pittsburgh with their defensive effort for the most of the season. Great year for them also in conference. Seton Hall, even though they had some trouble last night, I guess, against Pitt, you could say. Well, they lose by 32. But they've, Louis Orr did a nice job. That team, I thought, was in trouble about three and a half weeks ago. Held them together and had a nice run. 
Pitt put some defense on them last night. Ooh, did they ever, huh? Oh, Crushing them. Ontario let. He can make more catches. Of, they, they can make the most, the highest degree of difficulty entry passes to the post, and he's so long, he can make every catch. Nice pass down low. Shaw can't complete it. Gets it back. In trouble. He wants it. And he, yeah! There, the Grady Reynolds interfered and takes a couple away from Willie Shaw. Would have tied the game at 22. Yeah, my look on that was that that ball was going to drop too. I thought that was dying on the rim. Somehow Shaw gets it up there. See, I thought that ball was coming back with the spin on it, but you can't knock Reynolds for that because you want a guy going after the offensive glass, so you can't really penalize him or criticize him for that. Mike Sherrod at the controls with Ricky Shields. You got Lamazana. Jerome Coleman's back in the game. And then Adrian Hill. Coleman down low. Hill put back with two hands. See, Coleman thinks he can take Ingram on the blocks because he has a little size and can jump over people. So what happened just then, St. John's had to double team him down on the blocks. That allowed a huge lane to open up for offensive rebounding. Adrian Hill, a 6'8 freshman out of Canton, Ohio. Willie Shaw, guarded by Sherrod. Sherrod's good defender. Switch down low. The big guys are switching. No Marcus Hatton right now for St. John's. They've got Eric King, Ingram. Hatton's about to come in. They turn it over. Here's Lamazana. Coleman ahead of the pack. Coleman with the catch. One on three. And, and Ingram may have got a piece of that. And now a foul on the rebound. They're going to get Ingram for the foul. You see Coleman now on the blocks. He has him down low where he wants him. He gets his shot off. He, see the white shirt and start to creep in. And that allows Hill to just find the spot. Look for a soft rebound to finish it off and flush one through. Puts Jerome Coleman at the line where he front rims the first, 75% on the season. Here's Hatton back in the game almost on cue as Eric King leaves. And Coleman had an outstanding season. 17th in scoring, 13th in steals, 10th in three-point percentage, and 5th in made threes. 25 to 20. Under four and a half to play. First half here at Madison Square Garden. Hatton with Ingram in the backcourt. Cuff, Reynolds, and Shaw. They find Shaw wide open for three. Kick it back to Hatton. Pretty good reaction by Rutgers on the perimeter defense. Ingram challenge and no. And a rebound. How about this? Loose ball with a break after Coleman. One man back. Left hand. Put it up and in. You know, okay, for a second there, I thought that pass was going to be too high to slow him down to catch it and go to the bucket, but it was just low enough so that Coleman could catch and go. Seven-point advantage now for Rutgers. A little game of runs so far here in the first ahead. half. And John's got out early. And then Rutgers has led. It's about four minutes, five minutes into this game. Hatton. Off balance and Coleman rebounds. Coleman's got three on three. Good recovery by St. John's. Shields a quick three ball. That was blocked. Was Reynolds got that one. That was blocked. Was Reynolds got that one. That shot was blocked because Coleman dribbled the ball one time too too many. They set up Ingram. That hit the top of the backboard. Willie Shaw around the world a couple of times for the bucket. Something about Ingram's shot, Dave. I just think as a youngster, he's shooting the ball. It appears to me that Ingram's shooting that basketball on the way up. I agree. Like halfway through his shot, and it's just not the way the mechanically. So a little fine-tuning over the summer. Get him ready for next year. Good player, though, besides that. Sherrod forced that into traffic. It was blocked. A lot of times they say shots are blocked because they're bad shots. Mm -hmm. Patting down the lane. That's a shooter's touch. Yes, it was, and it's a run again. Here comes St. John's knocking on the door again. So we've seen this a couple of times this evening already. Hatton's got 10 points. Sherrod being guarded by Ingram. Coleman comes out to get it. Willie Shaw's got a height advantage on Coleman. Let's see if Coleman can use quick. Does, gets a step, sets up Lamazana. Take it away. Cut. Now Ingram runs. Good. Hatton with one man back. Reynolds wasn't paying attention. That's a heck of a recovery by Adrian Hill, who ran the floor very hard to get back in a position to make that play. All right, did he ever get down there in a hurry? And how about the quick kick by Ingram? He gives the ball to Hatton to look good inside positioning here. Yeah, that's a good call from the officials. A good, strong drive. 
And you see, it's pretty difficult to dunk the basketball when somebody grabs your right wrist and pulls it away <laughs> from the rim. <laughs> Make him shoot a couple at the line. That's why you foul him. That's exactly right. And they know the scouting report. Grady's just 61% on the season. Sean Exani's back in for Adrian Hill, and Glover replaces Willie Shaw. Grady Reynolds out of Southern Union State College. The JC, uh, sixth place in a national junior college tournament last year. Got a two-point ball game. Rutgers on top at the 216 mark. The Rutgers, when it's had its opportunities, now the Scarlet Knights have run very effectively as Coleman completes that play. Two-point Rutgers lead here at the Garden. Senior night for the St. John's Red Storm. 2.16 to go here in the first half. Let's take a look at this week's Big East Dodge Tough Player of the Week. And that Tough Player of the Week is Syracuse sophomore forward Hakeem Warren. One of the leading candidates for this year's Most Improved Player Award. Warren's ability to attack the rim has helped propel the Orangemen to the top of the West Division in the Big East this season. Hakeem Warren of Syracuse, this week's Dodge Tough Player of the Week. Glad he doesn't like to dunk too, right? <laughs> Boy, he's, uh, he has really done some nice things. You combine him with uh, Camelo Anthony up front, right? And then you've got you know, McNamara and company in a backcourt. And Billy Edelin played well a couple of days ago. Right. Here's, here's our backcourt matchup. Two marquee guys, Coleman and Hatton, leading scores for their respective clubs. Yeah, the numbers pretty much. We're right on target, and that's why we have this game that we have on our hands with 2.16 left in the first half. Rutgers leading by a bucket. Coleman averages 16.5 points a game. Hatton averages 21.8. See if they attack right now against this. Oh, that's one way to get an advantage. Sure enough. Brady Reynolds. Hopefully somebody will wipe that up. If there was anything there, here's Sharon. Stay there, I'll get it. Somebody is wiping it up. Coleman, Mamazano wants head and touched in a while. Reverse on the spin, and Cuff's got an easy rebound and then a quick foul. Seven boards for Kyle Cuff. Make that eight boards for Kyle. Kyle averaging just under six a ball game. So he's off to an outstanding start. And Duke rebounding from their loss here at the Garden. That's a, a revenge matchup against the Seminoles. I think it's a little senior night down there. The Seminoles got them earlier in the year and coming off a loss here at the Garden to St. John's. I don't think you want to be Florida State tonight. No. Duke <laughs> seniors, uh, they only have the significant players. Only no. uh, Dante Jones, right? I believe so, yeah. I think everybody else is underclassmen, all their big-time players. So you're not going to tell me that Cameron's quiet down there right now, right? It hasn't been quiet since about 2 this afternoon. Are you kidding? Oh, about 200 years it hasn't been Really? Going. Under a minute and a half to go here in the first 20 minutes. Hatton had to get in there. Count it. I'm still trying to figure out your question. I'm not sure I have an answer for you. How did he get through there? Boy, oh, boy. It's like, I dare you to get through. Okay, I'll take that. And here's that push, get your shoulders through. And you know what? That's a good that's a good bucket right there. I think some people thought it didn't. The grab was a little bit early, but the grab was early in the move, but he was off the floor when it was when he was grabbed initially. That gives you an idea of how much they're gonna miss him next year. That's some, some big shoes to fill next year for St. John's. Well, he's a guy who could do so many things for the St. John's team. Handle the ball for Mike Jarvis. Get his shot off in traffic. Obviously get the ball going towards the bucket also. Another run in this game. It's an 8-0 run by the Red Storm. They regain the lead. First time they've had the lead in a while. I'm not sure about that shot. Keep it right here. It's going to be Rutgers ball. And I think you have to make the defenders work a little bit more than that. Last time St. John's had the lead was back at 8-7. Stay with us at halftime. Take a look at Big East scores, the Big East Wire, and Hyundai highlights. Rutgers needs this win to improve its chances of making the Big East tournament. Kyle Cuff jump off short, and a foul is going to go against... Let's see Curtis Shaw with the call. Is it Sherrod down low? It's going to be against Rutgers. 
And foul's going to be against Sean Zanny, his second. Zanny, okay. I was going to say, if Sherrod took down Glover that strongly. And there was Zanny with a little, you know, look, yeah. extended with the right arm. Right arm, we got him. And that was one and one is in effect. That was a seventh team foul for Rutgers. Six team fouls for St. John's. Anthony Glover, grad student this year. He's got his working on his master's degree in criminal justice. Tonight's his 65th straight start. And Anthony, a 72 percent shooter at the line, misses an opportunity there as we're in the final 40 seconds. 8 0 run by the Red Storm. Down low. Somebody got left free, and it's Lamazana. And check that, it's Hill. And Shields with the recognition just then also. Hill and Mike Jarvis's question, who had him? Who did you have? How many times have we seen coaches with that kind of query? That's when you start saying, I don't, I think Sims had him. I, I didn't have him. <laughs> My goodness. Look at him. He's, he's down there for a sandwich if he wants one. He can go mm -hmm. to the concession stand before that a defender got close to him. What, what do you want for your, <laughs> your after dinner drink? <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Yeah. Tell by Gary Waters' body language, it's <laughs> straight at him. That's you it. know, no wiggles, no, straight at sure. him. And, and Gary's a straightforward Midwest kind of guy. Right. He's really enjoying himself here in the East Coast now. He's out of Detroit. If I were Gary, just then I'd tell him to keep running that same play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adrian, just sort of like yeah, hang hide. out. <laughs> hide over by the cheerleaders <laughs> until they forget. Longtime assistant at Eastern Michigan. Two NCAAs and one NIT at Kent State. Rutgers with a good percentage, a better percentage tonight than St. John's. We told you about St. John's. They've been struggling the last six games. 32%. That's where they are right now. Plenty of time right now, just coming down to 10 seconds. We want to go at about seven or six to get something moving. They're going to wait. Wiggins a pretty good defender. Let's see if Hatton can get it off. There's help right through Cuff's hands with one five. To go. Boy, they let some time run on that Boy, clock. did they ever. You saw that too. It's about <laughs> almost a second. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was close to a second myself. I don't think anybody else caught it, though. Th that's HC, home cooking. <laughs> In the name of the late, <laughs> great Beats Browning, long time. Let out the burgers. Clock, clock <laughs> operator here at Madison Square Garden some time ago. Marcus Hatton leading the way with 13 points. Red Storm trailing by one at halftime to the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Halftime coming up here at the Garden. We're about to start the second half here at Madison Square Garden. And Big East basketball, the home finale for the St. John's Red Storm. And every 20 minutes for Gary Waters Ball Club is critical. Half game lead on West Virginia. West Virginia has two victories over Rutgers. And that last seed, you finish last, you don't come to New York in the Big East Tournament. And one way Rutgers can solve it is just by winning tonight and winning that last game, and everything's put behind them. Very emotional <laughs> huddle. <laughs> yeah, right. Very emotional huddle for Rutgers. And they got to get as many opportunities as possible. They're down to the last game and a half now. It'll be tough, tough, and tough up at Syracuse. His leading scorers are marquee matchup. 13 points, first half for Hatton. Coleman with nine, second leading score for St. John's. Willie Shaw off the bench with eight. And it was five points for Ricky Shields, and there's a good start for Hatton. That's exactly how St. John's wanted it to start. Give him the basketball. He took it away from Ingram in the backcourt. Make something happen. Amazana thought about it. Down the lane. Pull up. Too strong. They keep it alive. And there's Glover taking over for St. John's. Glover was a factor defensively just then, forcing Amazana to take a 10 foot shot instead of driving all the way towards the glass. They end up getting the basketball off the defensive boards because of it. St. John's 0 for 5 from three-point range. Here's Glover, fouled, and he'll go to the line. Exani picks up the foul, his third. Notice the same type of set for St. John's just then with Hatton with the basketball. 
kind of lulled everybody to sleep. I think most of the people on Rutgers' team was thinking he was going to go to the basket and look for his shot again. And Glover with the easy catch to begin. You let him catch the ball down there. You're going to have problems defensively. Glover always gives you a real rugged, earnest effort every night out. He's the kind of guy that you know, has been one of his bedrock, bedrock kind of guys for this program and stepped outside and hit a just a tremendous three-point jumper. Yeah, that was that a monster. Guy, it sure was, and Grady Reynolds gets the rebound. It was a monster three, and it's kind of just the way he plays all the time. It's an undersized power forward down low, banging with the big guys. Kyle Cup. Puts it on the floor with the left hand. No rebound. Taken out by Exanic. Yeah, they got Glover, too, I think. Glover does pick up the foul. And for Anthony, that'll be his first. 12 points for Glover the other day against Duke. Uh, Ooh, Lovinson almost ran with that basketball. Mm -hmm. He couldn't move on it. Couldn't take that step. He got away with one. Coleman takes it inside. Put back. No, boy, he won't get a better put back opportunity than that. Reynolds has about uh, been around the glass for two games now. First against Duke. And here tonight. Ooh, Hatton, too strong. Nobody went for the ball for Rutgers, though. Sure enough. Glover was able to find it. Ingram set up. Hatton with the left hand. He finishes with the left hand as well as anybody of the right-handers in the conference. Yes, he does. And that time, Rutgers started to go out on their fast break and forgot one key ingredient. They forgot the basketball. Biggest lead enjoyed by St. John's this evening. Four points. Here's Ingram along the baseline. Look at Hatton just finding and waiting, tucking away, looking for something in the seams in the gutter of the basketball floor. Anybody else come to mind that finishes a uh, righty that finishes so well with his left? I can't think of anybody. I uh, seen anybody else that comes to mind right now. Coleman with room. Three ball. Can't get it. Rebound Glover. Yeah, I'm trying to think also. And there, I tell you what, at the next level, if you will, the NBA, there aren't a heck of a lot of guys up there that finish with the all band real well. Not many. Not many guys finishing anymore with their drives to the basket. That's been a, yeah, an that. outside shooting basketball. Glover draws two. Steps through, and here's Grady Round. Down low, Kyle Kopp. And Exani picks up the foul, his fourth. Nice bounce pass just then. Fundamentally sound pass by Reynolds from the top of the elbow area. And it allows Cuff just to go after. Watch the quick bounce pass right on the target. And it allows you not to put the basketball on the floor. You're so close, go right after the 10. Kyle Cuff, top offensive rebounder. 13th in conference play at 2.58. Adrian Hill is going to come in for Xanny, who's got the four fouls. And Sean's going to get a lot of time now on the bench. Still thinking on your question, Dave, who goes and finishes? No, that I know team. Troy Bell is a righty. He goes to his left pretty nicely. Yeah. But not so much on the finish. That's right. what you're getting at, the finish yeah. all the way. Yeah. Manhattan, you know, puts it up like he, he's very uh, ambidextrous. Yep. Impressive. Right. Rutgers 0 for 5 to start the half in the field and a five-second violation. Nice pressure defense by Elijah Ingram. I'm just going to say, too, with Sherrod, it's just a little too much dribbling. You know, get the basketball up. Get it to somebody and start your offense. Ingram, nice job staying within the distance. Good pressure. He stays up that next step across with the pullback dribble by Sherrod. Good work by Ingram defensively. And I'm glad they had like that five seconds. Pat had to finish on with a lefty delivery. And Coleman picks up the foul. And Jerome second. His third on Coleman. So that's a critical foul for Rutgers at the 17-11 mark with St. John's leading by five. So Gary Waters leading scorer is in some trouble. A Hyundai Sonata. Air conditioning, automatic transmission, 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, side airbags. Do I need those? Look out! Side airbags. 
When you get a Hyundai Sonata starting at just $16,524, including America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles, you win. Right now, get a 2003 Sonata with zero money down and zero payments for 90 days. The male can often find himself in precarious situations. It is funny. So how many girls have you, you know? Well, that Rutgers huddle was pretty emotional to start this second 20 minutes. Here we are at the 17-11 mark. They're 0 for 5 from the field with a turnover, no points. St. John's is 2 for 4, 6 points. And St. John's has opened up a 34-29 lead here. And Jerome Coleman has picked up his third foul, so that doesn't help the uh, Rutgers cause at all. Leading score, 16 and a half points, 35% shooting. That's what he's done to this point. And he's coming off that fabulous performance against Notre Dame Sunday, where he went seven for 12 from three-point range, finished tonight nine of 16 from the field. Gary Waters will think this one through for a little while. He'll get the sense for where this game is going, and that will dictate just how much time Coleman sits on the bench or not. If it goes in St. John's favor and they spread this lead out, you'll see Coleman in there much quicker than what he may want to. Patton, the 72 and change free throw shooter, Sean Xander, he's on the bench with four fouls. So one of their best low post defenders. The Rutgers with that two very important uh, guys on their roster. Good opportunity here for St. John's. Let's see what they do. Without Coleman on the floor, they're going to come back full court where Rutgers has had some success. Somebody's got to pick up the ball and take it out of bounds. I think that's, st I think that's still a rule in this game, if I recall. <laughs> got to get it and take it out of bounds. Somebody pick it up. Sherrod being guarded by Ingram. This is a good matchup. Sherrod turns the corner momentarily. Can't totally get by him. Good recovery by Ingram. The shot put right in his face by Sherrod. Good, good job. Yeah, good answer by Sherrod, and especially with that pressure right there. Sometimes the pressure is designed to get you to take a quicker shot than you may normally want to in your offense. Good, good shot. And Hatton got it free, got it up. Rebound, Joel Wigan, but Hatton gets uh, it back. Free. Nice play by Hatton feeding Grady Reynolds. Just the instincts. He has them all. He knows how to play the game. He's going away from the basket, making something happen. They're going to make Wigan bring it up. Almost a quick step with Wigan just then. I thought he was close to traveling. Amazana trying to get past Kyle Cobb. And Kyle bodies him and picks up the foul, his first. When Amazana gets himself moving quickly, Without thinking too much, he's much more effective. Watch Hatton track this basketball right here. Gets kicked out to our right, looking at it. Bang, nice little look away pass and delivery with the left hand. Rod the Shields who drives baseline. And he got shoved out of bounds. He got fouled by, it's like Anthony Glover. So Glover picks up his second. Team fourth St. John's. Is the inbound Wigan? What three successive fouls wow. here? So this is aiding and abetting the Rutgers cause. Second foul on Hatton. So Hatton's got two. Glover's got two. Grady Reynolds with two. Abe Keita, a senior who started, he has two. And there's your second half foul total. Watch your Rutgers right now. Make this work for you. Down six. Keep taking it right to the hole. Yeah, I was going to say, go to the hoop. Get it in the paint area and make it happen. Amazana, a little bit too spicy on that pass, but it got knocked out of bounds by St. John's. Timeout, 15.53 to go here at the Garden. Six-point advantage right now for the Red Storm of St. John's. They're in some foul trouble. The male can often find himself in precarious situations. It is funny. So how many girls have you? It's St. John's leading 37-31 here at Madison Square Garden. Big East basketball with the 15-53 mark. And a reminder to get the uh, information on your favorite Big East team. Go online at www.bigeast.org for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big East. And don't forget, next week, you can follow the Big East tournament on the Big East website at bigeast.org.
Dave Sims and Jim Spinarco with you at the Garden. Six point advantage for the St. John's Red Storm. The guard comparison right now, Shields with the advantage. Ingram and St. John's struggling from the field. St. John's with a lead, but St. John's now with five team fouls compared to Rutgers three. See if the Scarlet Knights continue to get to the hole. There's Lamazana headed partially tipped by Willie Shaw. He started that play. Arrow will keep it right here. Eight on the shot clock. And so they, they're going to get a reset. Eight seconds, no, no reset, no reset. They're going to not going to do a reset here. So 15-38, Rutgers ball. they got to get something done here. Wigan with a tough shot. Oh, and he got bailed out. He got bailed out. Third foul on Hatton. Timmy Higgins was right on sure was. angle. I mean, it wasn't like Timmy was making that call from across the court. He was standing right next to the play and had a good line of vision for it. Man, this Wiggins is just a 37% shooter, so boy, Pat did him a favor. It was quick right there, but I believe the call went right against the elbow. Mike Jarvis not happy with the call, but he's down the other end of the floor also, so his line of vision is not there. So Wiggins one out of two, and 15-34 will make note of that. That's where Hatton picked up his third foul. Let's see if they go after him next time down. Interesting how Mike Jarvis elects to leave him on the floor. Willie Shaw came in with the ref as a big time long range shooter. Tonight he's been affected. Off the glass, Hatton. He can really make it happen. I mean, he's outstanding. He's got 20. Not only that, too, Dave, but how he gets himself free at the very end of his moves. And he started out with two guys hanging on him pretty close, and then he stretched it out and slid away from the defenders. Our disadvantage tonight by St. John's. Calvin Wooten's going to come in for Rutgers at the next opportunity. Wigan got in trouble. And a foul against St. John's. Take a, take a look, see how close the defender is here and look where he ends up getting his shot off. Now granted he's a right-handed shooter so he wants to drift away from the defender on that move, but he really on his last move and his last elevation, not only does he go up, but he goes away at the same time. That was St. John's seventh foul. So at the 14-44 mark, Rutgers is shooting one and one. He also saw Calvin Wooten come into the game. The Wigan makes the first. They well, should Rutgers can make some hay line. now. Yeah, just live at the line right now. Rutgers has a chance to close that gap on free throw attempts. Rutgers, both these teams are not very good at free throw shooting. Rutgers is 13th next to last, and St. John's is 12th. Keep in mind, opportunity no, here. Rutgers is you know, a guard-driven, perimeter-driven team, so they really have to get that ball and change and go to the bucket as much as possible. Got to keep it right here. Abe Keita comes in for Kyle Cuff. Glover's in as well. So right now for St. John's, they got Hatton, Reynolds, Shaw, Keita, and Glover. has carried the load once again for St. John's. Here's Glover trying to pull his way down the lane. Can't complete the play. And Lamazana breaks out. Got a man ahead. He got a four on one. Lamazana, deep pass inside. Lead for Hill. And he got fouled. It wasn't your picture perfect fast break, but it did get the results that they wanted. Rutgers going down the floor in a hurry. A little late on the delivery because you have a big guy handling the basketball, not comfortable in terms of when to deliver. Hung on to it just a little bit too long, allowing the defenders to get back into the flow. Uh, but they end up getting what they want out of it. So Keita picks up the foul, his third. Adrian Hill had a thunderous follow back in the first half. And make this a two-point ball game. And he does. 
So Adrian Hill, a 48 percenter, gets Rutgers to within two. Big East basketball here in Madison Square Garden, a game that Rutgers has got to get. They want to keep hopes alive of making the Big East tournament. Dave Sims and Jim Spinarco with him. St. John's is assured a spot in the tournament. Rutgers only a half game lead on last place West Virginia in the Big East West Division. Shields a little bit too close attention paid to Hat Met time. So Shields is foul. And I gotta guess Sherrod, beg your pardon, Sherrod's first. And there's a look, West Virginia trailing Rutgers by a half game. And the Mountaineers, they have to play at home against Virginia Tech and that's coming up on Saturday. While Rutgers will be on the road at Syracuse Sunday. Hat got off another beauty. Himself, isn't he? He's just watching every half. He puts up one, two, or three dandies. St. John's has 41 points. Hatton's got 22 of them. He's also playing with three fouls, so he's got to be careful. Lamazana, offensive foul. That's his third. Lamazana showing some quicks along the baseline just then, attacking. Now let's see what a defender is. So that's the difference between the NBA and the uh, college game right there. In the NBA game, that's a, fa that's a foul on the defender because he did not come from within the uh, circle down below on the baseline. Right in the middle of the lane. Ingram turns the corner and they feed Brady Reynolds. Oh, and he muscle out with him and they get another foul on Lamazana. That'll be his fourth. Boy, oh, good smarts just then, too. Take advantage of... Reynolds hitting the block strongly, but Lamanzana in pretty good position initially. But as you touched on, bull right through him. A little bit of body contact, enough for the foul. Yep, good call from Timmy Higgins along the baseline. So Lamanzana with just four points. Hervé is the third leading scorer for Rutgers, just under 11 a game. So he's going to get some time on the bench. Reynolds, not a good free throw shooter, but he nails that one. Just over 61 percent. Full court action again for St. John's, where they had some success against Duke on Sunday. Sherrod splits the D. Sherrod attacking, takes it all the way in, finger roll, and they get fouled. Well, and he gets by people, he recognizes in a hurry, especially at half court. He's got a couple of dribbles to really recognize the openness of the floor, the advantage. And here's that push through. He pushes that dribble through two and three guys. Nice, strong attack to the basket. You're going to get that call all the time. Fourth foul on Abe Keita. Foul troubles are mounting. Rutgers with 16 fouls. Johnny's with nine. Sherrod at the line. Gary, call, Gary Waters calls him his, his tempo guy, and you can certainly see that on the play. Xani's in trouble. You see that? Four for him, four for Lamazana Coleman, their leading scorer. They're going to want to get him in before long. It's a seven-point deficit. Just thinking the same exact thing, Dave. Hill tried to keep it alive, but Hatton takes over for St. John's. What do we got? Clock not moving? Yep. There we go. Put 33 seconds on the shot clock. Seven-point advantage for Mike Jarvis and St. John's Red Storm. Curtis Shaw that time catching the shot clock. It's amazing how these officials are trained to watch mm -hmm. the clock at the same time, watch the game, what's going on. Multitasking. That's it. Back Willie Shaw. And he's fouled inside. Kareem Wright got it. It's going to be one of those halves where there's going to be plenty of free throw shot. I love a parade. It's, it. <laughs> it's a big parade to the line. It's like 17 foul on Rutgers. Willie Shaw, 68.8% in conference play. Oh, he's having an outstanding night off the bench tonight with nine points. Biggest lead tonight for St. John's right now. Eight point advantage. They get, keep it at eight and Sherrod rebounds. We pull the fouls though, Dave. We haven't been able to get a real good rhythm at the offensive end exactly. of the team. It's just. I don't think we've had a continuous like, up and down, a couple up and downs. I don't know? think so either. Green right gets it out top to Sherrod. That's a pick. 
for the mismatch now, Sherrod. Inside of Kareem Wright, Reynolds knocked it away. Three second violation, he gets out. Oh man. Here's Wooten. Calvin gets off the shot, shot an air ball. Put back is good, however. With four seconds on the shot clock, just got that shot off in time, good recognition. Rutgers continues to hang around. St. John's can't put him away. 45-39 under 12 on the putback by Wiggin. Look inside, A.P. to play with four fouls. Willie Shaw's got it. St. John's basically a one-man band. Hatton's got 22 of their 45 points. A lot of dribble. Shot clock at seven. Hatton checks. He's under duress. Fires and hits. Marcus Hatton. When you top player of the year in the Big East Conference, you got to top Troy Bell, Marcus Hatton, Mike Sweetney. Got to be your three leading candidates. And St. John's gets it to a nine point lead. You notice how he didn't disappear too when that shot clock was going down? That's an extra step, isn't it? Sure was. Wigan thought he could get away with a jump stop, but it didn't work. 11.17 to go. Timeout on the floor here at Madison Square Garden. Marcus Hatton having another outstanding performance. He's got 25 of the 48 St. John's points. St. John's on top of Rutgers right now. 11.17 to go in regulation here at Madison Square Garden. Marcus Hatton, what more can you say about this guy? He does absolutely everything you can want more for St. John's. It's a variety of moves that he shows. The drives to the basket, he hangs around underneath and looks for the basketball. He spaces himself well to get his shot off. The quickness off the dribble. I mean, he gets it all going. He loves to attack, set you up, attack, spin, and use the reverse to avoid the shot from being blocked. Very good off the dribble, and he tracks the shot down there with the shot clock winding down. Found the basketball, did not hide from it. Take a look at the numbers tonight. 25 big points, 10 of 15, has gotten to the line for four or five free throws, so filling up the stat sheet. And it's 11 17 to go. <laughs> I mean, that's a week's oh, work. That's it. Let's see what he ends up with. St. John's, big reason why they are approaching a double figure lead is no turnovers on 7 of 11 shooting from the field. Hatton with room. Hatton down the lane. Won't go to tip. No good. Keita staying with it. He's got the rebound. Jump up. It's good by A. Keita, who got his first start tonight. A little bit of a drift there, too, to get away from the big fella, right? It's a good idea all the time with Wright using that bulk and body down low. So Jerome Coleman is back in the game. Rutgers got to step into this one as they're down by the largest margin of the night. Coleman in trouble. Blocked by Aikina. Good luck. Ahead by Willie Shaw. He's got another. Oh, he blew it. Can you believe that? He had an easy deuce for 30 and couldn't convert. Well, I'm speechless, Dave. Those are ones you just want to lay in. Wooten, 0 for 2 from the side. That's knocked out of bounds by Adrian Hill. Try to put a little, and a look on Mike Darvis's face. Well, that answers that question. Well, they're spectacular. This is a quick get out. Nice look by Shaw. A little bit too much flair right here. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. Something I've never done in my life, though, by the way, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> never made one of those either. <laughs> Patton gets it back. Now, fingers, he makes that one, right? Does he do anything easily, this guy? <laughs> Give him the 30. That's disheartening for Rutgers. A 13 2 run. Exani, one of several Rutgers players in foul trouble. The Rutgers needs a quick response here. They don't get back into this game. They can forget about the Big East tournament. And a foul on Kyle Cuff. That'll be his third. Gary Waters' club was in pretty good shape, but Hatton has done a lot of damage. Well, Dave Sims, he says, all right, you're going to call that missed shot on that dunk. Let's left, see you call this one. Left hand, you see that? <laughs> That's it. Left, left with, with English off the glass. Very, very good with the left hand. This is starting to get away from Rutgers right now. Sure is. Kareem Wright, 46% at the line. 13 points, the deficit right now, 9.48 to go. Not only the deficit, but they have some key players with foul trouble. This is in both. 
The Rutgers 0 for 6, 0 and 6 on Big East Road games this year in a big hole, and it's getting bigger. This is where the handle comes becomes so important to St. John's with Ingram and Hatton. Hatton fade away. He's wow. got it on tonight, folks. That shot should not go in. That, that shot should not go in. That's just a brutal shot to defend. Isn't it? Hatton got hit. He's holding his left. I don't know if he got hit on the quote-unquote funny bone, but he's holding his left wrist after that shot. I'd love to know what Mike Jarvis, in going right to his main guy before the huddle, I'd love to know what he was telling him. You know what my guess is? You're too good to showboat. Finish the plays. You don't need to take any chances. I mean, you have too many skills. And granted, he misses a dunk. I mean, you can't crucify him because no. of that. I think it, that's a point well made because they, they get, you know, they get the biggest tournament still to come. Yeah. They might be able to do something. Right. You never know. You look at this St. John's team, it's all Hatton. I mean, to be frank, they're 13 and 12, 5 and 9. If you don't have Hatton, they probably oh. don't have half that total. Oh, for sure. For sure, because a lot of growing pains without him, that's for sure. 9.21 to go. St. John's by 15 now over Rutgers. Rutgers bringing it up. Calvin Wooten being guarded by Elijah Ingram. Lamazana is back in the game. It's time for the last stand here for Rutgers. Oh, for sure. Wooten, Lamazana, Wright, Coleman, and Hill. And if you're Rutgers, Jerome, you got a green light, big fella. And there it is. Off the glass, Jerome Coleman off the spin. He was watching Hatton a little on the bench, that's for sure. Nice little variety of his own with the spin in the lane. And Rutgers settling back to a 2-3 zone. And St. John's will just pour time off the clock right now. St. John's last in uh, field goal shooting. Here's Hatton. That's an NBA three. My goodness! can just shake his head. That's all he can do. It. Whatever Hatton had for the pregame meal, I'd get a year's worth of that food and put it, put it on the cabinet. Maybe Mike Jarvis is telling him, hey, the light gets a, a, a brighter shade of green here. Cut it loose. <laughs> Rebound by Glover. Maybe that's what it was. I'll tell you. <laughs> there was an NBA three. He's over there. He's up 15. Take this one, coach. <laughs> I don't know if Rutgers can sit back in this zone. I agree. Especially if Hatton's going to find the little re real estate. Here he goes again. He's, oh, he's lucky. That ball was going up. That ball was no going up if it weren't deflected out of bounds. Ninth career 30-point-plus game for Marcus Hatton. I'm going to say he was taking that ball out of bounds. He might shoot one from that distance. Uh, Tallahassee Community College in Baltimore is going up again. Gorgeous rotation on that one. Won't throw Glover rebound. Good sparks by Glover. Take it out. You get a fresh shot clock. Take another 30 seconds or so. 25 seconds. Bring the clock, clock down. Talking to Mike Jarvis earlier in the year. He's had a lot of great players. So Hatton's among two or three greatest he's ever had. As we were saying, he's going to Michael Jordan said, hey, man, I got it tonight. I'm in the zone. Marcus Hatton, timeout Rutgers. A 19 point advantage. The last regular season home game for Marcus Hatton and St. John's and Mike Jarvis. Loosen the reins, cut it loose, big fella. Wow, has this ever been a terrific oh, show man. in the second half? We have 13 at the half. Oof. Here's the other thing. If you're Gary Waters, you're saying, hey, fellas, the guy couldn't be any hotter. Can we guard him? He's the guy wearing number one. Somebody find him. Somebody stay with him. But the zone right now for Rutgers is very passive on the perimeter. And Hatton's really getting a lot of time to set himself up to shoot those shots. Just remarkable. Hey, it, you know, a player like that, you give if you're going to give it to him, you know, He's doing his job. He's shooting a career high 35, 14 of 21, five boards, and he's got the last 10 St. John's points. And it's the most points by a St. John's player since Glover went for 35 against Hofstra back in the 99 2000 season. My, oh my. I said a moment ago this one's starting to get away from Rutgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it may be bye bye. 
Wooten. Short arm that one. Isn't that kind of nice? Coleman can't find it. And if Coleman can't find it, they're in big trouble. And remember, Rutgers had that advantage too, with St. John's piling up the fouls early on in this second half. Really haven't been effective going to the basket to utilize that advantage. How about Rutgers? Four of 18 here in the second half. That and down the lane. And he got fouled. Either he's getting his shot off cleanly or he's going to the line because he's drawing so much attention to himself. As our friend, the governor, Bill Raftery, would say he's getting a lot of blow bys. I mean, he's just going by people in the lane. Who was that guy you referred to as? The governor. <laughs> I am really anxious now to see the uh, player of the year voting. Because this certainly is going to give him, uh, I mean, he was already right there. Right. The, Let's take a look at the Shooting the Rock brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab a rock, second half. Look at these numbers. 11 of 19, 4 of 18. The only thing I would add to that, when you talk about the, uh, the race for the player of the year, there's a reason that Boston College made their run on top of the Eastern Division. Bingo. Bingo with Troy, Troy Bell having a great run over 11 games or so. Timeout on the floor, 6.47 to go. St. John's on a 23 to 4 run. They've got this one under control for the moment at 62 to 41 on a night where Marcus Hatton making a memorable night out of his last regular season appearance at Madison Square Garden. Down to the 62-41 lead here, 6.47 to go at Madison Square Garden. Pretty much putting this one on ice. If the biggest tournament started today, the Red Storm would take on Notre Dame. But, uh, how do you see Notre, how do you see St. John's faring in the biggest tournament this year? With this one-man, one-man band mark, led by uh, Marcus Hatton. The thing with it is that you want to try to get a little rhythm into your basketball team and your game. Prior to these tournaments, you don't want to wait as you take a look at some of these numbers that he's put up tonight. It's just spectacular. 37 points, the career high, 14 to 21. So you have to look at it and say, are they getting on the roll at the right time? They're coming off the Duke win. The last game, they've convincingly put Rutgers away now with 6.42 left. We'll see what happens in the last six minutes and change. But can he carry them? A hot guy sometimes can in the tournament. Coleman can't find a nice tap back by Lamazon. They go to McCoy, who came into the game. Jason McCoy, a sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Rutgers going to have to extend a little bit right now. And uh, they're not exactly extending that hard right now, although they've got McCoy at 6'9 on hat. I figure at least make it so he's got to shoot over somebody. And they get McCoy for leaning all over hat. Yeah, it's one way to try to guard him. Lay on him and put your arms around him. Six foot nine against six foot one. Patton led the Big East Conference in scoring last year. And right now, he's fourth in scoring. He's 19th national. What a year. 17th in rebounding with tied with Glover. Here's Joel Wigan coming in for McCoy. He got a brief appearance. Fifth in assist, first in steals, and 15th in assist turnover ratio. It's all over the, the stat sheets. And he's got 39 points. Wow. Last time a St. John's player had one for 40, it was Bootsy Thornton versus Duke. Jan 24 of 99. And here comes your 40 plus right now. And maybe it's time to get him out of the game. He's got 41, the ninth time a St. John's player has scored 40 or more in a game. 66-43. And I'm not sure he's going to play the rest of this game time-wise, Dave. Wow, there's a plenty of 540 left. Willie Shaw got one. When Willie's gone right, he makes that shot. As a freshman, he was making a lot of those shots. And it's been a struggle since then. Oh, this is a 30 to 6 run. 3 0 to 6. And Xana got fouled big time on that one. Seen a lot of runs before, but this has been one of the better ones. Hatton started that play. Right. 
Similar to Sunday, had a way he started the play and finished that off against Duke. He got fouled at the play at the end of the basketball game against Duke. But just an unbelievable second half. one out and expression on Gary Waters face the exasperation says it all and the bad news for Gary's 517 left can't get on the bus I mean you can tell Bussy to warm it up but it's not gonna do you any good Oof. want to think for Gary and Xani stays with it sets up Wigan Wigan lost it going out of bounds was the first turnover for St. John's this half. Gary Waters got to be optimistic and talking to him this afternoon. And brighter days are ahead. He's got some good recruits coming in. Big thing, he's got to re replace Jerome Coleman. Right. Coleman, while streaky, is still a valuable player to have. Absolutely. And one of the things Gary would love to see right now is team finish strongly. Wigan on the challenge gets inside. Boy, this team is so different away from the rack. At the rack, I'm telling you, they could. I like you could take a look at them at a lot of top 20 teams, top 10 teams in, at the rack, but away from home, it's just been an unmitigated disaster. Well, it really has been, and I, I think sometimes the when you're driven by the perimeter game, as they have been, and it can go cold on you, goes cold on a lot of teams that can cause problems, especially on the road. It's easy to lose your focus when you're not shooting the ball well on the road. Rutgers last year in the Gary Waters' debut season, they went 18 and 13, 15 and 2 at home. It's just a matter of working the clock smartly now for St. John's. And Hatton's still in the game. I can't imagine him being for too much longer. He's got 41 points. Willie Shaw going for two in a row. In and out. Rebound Hatton. Hatton will fire. He's feeling it. That's why. shoot the ball like that on given nights. You don't want the night ever to end. But we play, like Mr. Banks said, let's play two. Wow, let's play four. My goodness. <laughs> got fans here at the Garden saying, hey, hey, you're here. You got 44. Go for 50. That's it. Irving, no. Rebound Hatton. Going to call Bernard Hatton. Hatton again. Hatton pops. He didn't get it. Let's see if they feed him. Uh, I think it's I think they're going to send him to the bench soon, Dan. They must not know because that's one of those deals. You know a guy's got 44, and you know time's going to short. Find him. Find him, but I don't know if Mike Jarvis wants to find them like that. I think you, you run into a couple of things where, A, you don't want to embarrass Rutgers, number right. one. And number two, you sure, surely don't want to see this guy get hurt fooling around oh, out there trying to track no. points down. 44 is the Big East high this season. Darius Rice had 43 earlier in the year. I believe that was against Connecticut. That was a game at uh, miraculous game where he got it. He won it on the inbound. Right, stole the stole was a three, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Step back. Uh, Connecticut. All they have to do is get it inbounds. Right. Young man rushed it inbounds. He stole it. Steps back. Hits a three ball game. Well, here on the big board in Madison Square Garden, they put up the score, so that's why the murmurs in the crowd because everybody knows it. Hatton's got 44. Well, you know what? You know it's a scary thought right now, Dave. Take a look at the score that Rutgers has on the board right now. I know. <laughs> it's really scary. You're exactly right. Ew, ouch. <laughs> My goodness. That shows you what kind of night he's had, huh? Man, that's pretty bad. When you, I mean, usually a guy goes for 44, it's like 100 to 70. Right. But here it is, 74 46. Let's take a look now at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the game at the four minute mark here at Madison Square Garden, the home finale, regular season finale for the St. John's Red Storm. And here's that BMW Ultimate Drive of the game, and the ball's in the hands of. The man of the night. Who else? You know, we could put an S on the end of that word drive, too, because he's had some drives of the game tonight. That's about four or five. They've been, it wasn't hard to find one of those tonight. <laughs> that wasn't even a challenge to the guys in the truck, right? <laughs> <laughs> Top 
25 action tonight. Arizona having a ha ha themselves against Oregon State. Duke blowout against Florida State. And a good Utah ball club at Colorado State up by five early. McCoy tees up a three and hits it. Most points in St. John's history for a game. Bob Zawalik at 65 back in 1950. Harry Boykoff at 54 and 45 and Hatton with 44. So this is a fourth highest total. He's still in the game with three and a, under three and a half to go. Didn't get it that time. Rebound Cuff had it, lost it to Kareem Wright. Still surprised that Hatton's out on the floor right now, Dave. Well, everybody's going to go for threes now. Why not? Ricky Shields bangs down the three. He's got eight. Leading score for Rutgers tonight. It is Coleman with 11, but he's got just two here in the second half. Tristan Smith, Timmy Doyle, they're in the game. Here's Smith. They get it to Hatton. Hatton's just giving it up now the last two times he's touched the ball. 12 on the shot clock. What a night by Hatton. Put it up a little too strong. Sherrod. Yep, I think Mike Jarvis has seen yeah, it. He gave, he gave him a... Again, two yeah. shots at yeah. Kevin Clark was monitoring as at the last time, the time before that, Shields hits the second three. He said, Coach, I think we need to go get him. That's it. And they try to get one more up right now. Yeah. And if you're John Scheinman, shoot the ball, young man, when you come in. It. Shoot it. You got a big lead. With two minutes left. By the time he gets in there, go for it. Tim Doyle finds Willie Shaw. Hatton in there. Got the rebound. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? Yeah, I He's got eight boards tonight. You gotta believe that ball has his name on it, right? He's gonna put that in his bag and take it. I was gonna say, <laughs> make sure somebody grabs the ball. Now they run a double at him and a triple. He bounces it off his foot. Look at oh, see, just what you were talking about. Yeah, that's, yes, that's what you were you talking about. On the floor. Uh, Boy, somebody takes a cheap shot or an inadvertent play, and you know, Willie Shaw comes out limping after that. Yeah, you're exactly right. How many and how many times have you seen it or been in games? Oh, where yeah. you get a laugher, and now your best guy goes down. This is frightening. But St. John's has got this one wrapped. 142 to go. Back with more in a moment. Second half performance by Marcus Hatton in this 74-55 lead with a buck 42. Hatton's got 31 points here in the second half. 44 for the game, 16 of 26, 4 for 9 from 3, 8 of 9 from the line, 8 boards, 2 assists. That's to the moment. And you did mention he's still in the game, right? Yeah, so it's, <laughs> I'm stunned. And Kareem Wright gets a bucket over Big Curtis Johnson, who's in the game. Curtis Jr. out of Norfolk, Virginia. There it goes. Scheinman, get it in there. Oh, he couldn't get it. John Scheinman, a senior, their scholar athlete, a 3.86 student. Guys on the bench are telling him to keep shooting. Red Storm get the travel out of the. There it is again, Dave. Oh, oh. shoot it, John, for crying out loud. Still open in that corner. <laughs> I think Rutgers is more intent than keeping it out. Yeah, I don't blame you. There it is. Shoot it, young man. Get in the hole. Oh! Yeah, I like the root for a kid like that. You know, he's played four years, hardly get any playing time. Big East record, 48 points. Oh, man, wow. Mugging down low. My. Kareem Wright. Big East record for a game, 48 points. Eric Murdoch, one of Big East all-time greats for Providence. Back on Jan 23 of 91 against Pittsburgh. And Hatton sitting on 44. Yeah, maybe Mike Jarvis wanted get to get him ovation. Yep. 
going to be well deserved. Senior that's night, sure. the whole yeah. setup. Good move. There you go. There's a big ovation for Marcus Hatton. Most points in a Big East game. Hatton with 44 ties Kerry Kittles for second place behind Murdoch with 44 points. He is going to be missed. You have to consider when you talk about, and there have been so many great players at St. John's. Marcus Hatton's got to be on your list somewhere. And they have had their share. There's no question about that. Student section cheering, chanting Marcus Hatton. Well, for Rutgers, they still have to make the trip to Syracuse. I don't envy them for that. No, same here. Uh, I mean, and their only hope is making we a go, tournament. Babe, here's your man. man. No! Where is the lid? The, um, <laughs> the trip to Syracuse is not going to be a lot of laughs no. for Rutgers because they already in the, they're already in the hole of the West Virginia having lost twice to the Mountaineers. If the Mountaineers beat Virginia Tech at Morgantown on Saturday, Mountaineers are in. Right. And take a look at these numbers. Huh? 44 points, a career high. Not a bad night. Not a bad night. <laughs> I think he's going to remember it. And how about Big Kirk? With his first free throw make of the season, he's one for six. And Scheinman came in 0 for 4, and I think he went another, came in 0 for 4, and I think he went another 0 for 4 tonight. Doubled it up. Shame, though, because oh, of his last shots were oh, wide open. Had some great looks. The ball was sitting right in the middle of the cylinder. Just rolled right out. Well, at halftime, this was a ball game. In fact, Rutgers led by as many as seven points. It was 29-28 Rutgers at the half, second half. Totally different story, and a no doubt about her. 75 to 59. St. John's with the win. They go to 14 and 12, six and nine in the Big East Conference, and Rutgers drops to 12 and 15. Four and 11. For Jim Spinarco, I'm Dave Sims. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, worldwide leader in collegiate sports television. The Marcus Hatton Show produces 44 in the St. John's victory. Have a good night, everybody.